Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the channel. All right, Deb Chanel's World. Deb Chanel's 40th World, where you have found yourself to relax and sit down and chit-chat with me while we discuss this video. While we discuss candy birds getting all up in Sheree behind. Woo! How do we like to call uh, Candy the Shade Assassin <laughs> Part 2? Or uh, number two, because she didn't leave no stone unturned when she was going in on Miss Sheree Whitfield. Yes, she was. She was questioning everything. <laughs> I mean, everything when it came to Sheree, them 10,000 or how much they were chandeliers, honey. Candy was like, where are you getting all this money, girl? Where are you getting all this money? Okay, because we know you haven't been on the show in XYZ time. Woo, is your friend Tyrone left you some money, some illegal money that you were trying to get this house fixed up for? And that's why you were dating him, allegedly, girl. Girl, we want the tea. We want the tea. But... Candy is pretty much saying, Sheree and Marlo ain't shit. And I'm coming for them. And I'm like, okay, I'm on Team Candy. Candy. Yes, I'm on Team Candy. Because Candy was on her Speak On It uh, segment show she does on YouTube. And she was bringing the hot pot with the hot tea and the little thing going, true. You know that when your uh, your uh, tea kettle is uh, spouting out, saying it's ready. That's what Candy was doing. She was pouring it up for us. And I was drinking it slowly, blowing here and there and drinking it slowly. Because that was a piece of resistance right there. I was like, look at Candy. Now see, this is the candy we had all prayed for. This is the candy, I guess, whom she just shows uh, behind closed doors. Only with her friends' friends. Because she don't want to mess up her image or, you know, something to that. <coughs> something to that effect behind her. She said, no holes barred, no holes barred. <laughs> I'm finna get there. I'm finna go all in. And I am definitely finna get it. Get it going on Sheree behind. I'm like, girl, I know because she was over there telling Marlo when they were trying to talk about you. Candy, she was saying facts, preach, all that stuff tearing you down. Yes, Lord. So if I can say you got it, got them together, you got them together, or you got Sheree together, definitely on this uh, video of yours. But we're going to let y'all listen to a few bits in here, bits and pieces here. And I'm going to be doing my commentary around it. Because I'm like, no, she didn't. I mean, she was handling the shade like a professional. I was like, Candy. It is your girl, Candy. And I love How to speak on it. I was so excited to speak on it today. But she was funny. She was funny. Let's see. A whole lot. A whole lot. A whole lot. And I guess because it's a super sized episode. We have a lot to get into. Well, hello there. Kimmy, to do an appearance. Yes, yeah, that's about six years ago. You know, you fell on some hard times, so he's having a, uh, you know, a little moment right now. We reconnected maybe last year. How long was he in jail? Like, when? I don't it was for a very long time, because, I mean, we heard about Tyrone going to jail, 
you know, many seasons ago, that was... When we were going to Philly, mm -hmm. I got a phone call from Tyrone about this opportunity to make money. I started getting phone calls saying that you've been calling Tyrone. Back when me and you told you, everybody was on the show back then. Well, I told you about, you asked me about Tyrone before. And you didn't say anything. I did, I said, that's my friend. And when he went to jail, because it was a thing everybody was talking about. But Nene said he was a con artist. I mean, we can go down a list of a lot of things that people have done that could possibly put them in jail, but we're not going to do that. I don't quite remember the exact time, but the thing about it is, I'm just like, girl, you put your coochie on over him. That is wrong. Y'all was really close. We're cool. We're, we are. We're, 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 we're good. We're good. What is the story, though? Like, is it they started talking when he was in jail or before he went to jail? Well, they were talking before he went to jail. How long have you known Tyrone? It doesn't matter. I'm just making a point. What's your point? You don't remember. It was like a whole thing. They said he was also trying to talk to Nene. Back I know, but you was it that? we went on some dates or we were together? Like, that's what I never understood mm -hmm. between her and Nene. Well, I don't know what happened with the other side of the story. All I know is that he supposedly was like dating Sheree and then he went to jail. Are we going to see him? Uh... He's in, he's in prison. Now, I never got clarity of the situation, but he must have had a mean talk game, okay? Lots of money, which also brings me to, we gonna get to that in a second, because I'm thinking about that house and how beautiful it looked on the inside, and I'm like, Sheree wasn't on our show for a lot of seasons, so I hate to ask this question, but I gotta ask the question that a lot of people are gonna ask, like, when she starts talking about the money that she paid for the $10,000 chandelier, the $7,000 this, blah, 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 blah. Like, was this the this Tyrone money paying for this? Like, where did all this money come from to pay for all these things? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love this house. You know, this is my first time getting to see it without a whole crowd of people in here. Shut up, it's a mess. My cleaning lady will be here in a couple where hours. Where is the mess, right? She gonna be mad as hell at me for saying this, but realistically, like, she always, you know, yeah, is it a, was it another secret boo that we don't know about? Because she said she was holding on for Tyrone the whole time while that house was getting done. But that house got done. And for most of that time, she had left us. She went on our, she went with the house house no more. And the house got done. And when I tell y'all that house is fabulous, it's fabulous. Like it got all the bells and whistles in the inside. All the bells and whistles. Who is working? Where were the $10,000 chandelier checks coming from? <laughs> oh, Candid threw a low blow when that was below the knees, Candid. That was below the knees, but how they had checked on you, meaning her and Marlo was out there talking about you. I say point taken, point given to Candy. Okay, moving on. It's curious. I mean, I... I'm just speaking for the people because the people want to know, right? Yeah. I'm just saying what the people want to know because I know, you know, other people was in the room when I was watching the episode and that's what somebody else said. Like, golly, what the, who was paying for all of that? We all want to know. So. She's got a clothing line. No candy interviewer didn't say she got a clothing line. <laughs> Where? Where is it in Atlanta? Please tell me because I would love to go. I would love to go into She Bought Your Ray and see what she has got coming for spring, summer, fall, September. <laughs> I would like to know. But moving on. Come on now. Jamie, you trying to be funny because at the beginning of this episode, y'all already know they was, you know, playing little clips. So what's that? Maybe I'm flashing back to the uh, the season trailer. What happened to She by Sheree? He's given a fashion show with no fashion. So lifestyle. you're doing a line of She by Sheree yeah, athletic wear? When? When they kept flashing back to Sheree and all the years of not being able to pull She by Sheree together. So y'all do realize She by Sheree is not out yet. You know, it's not out yet. Like, she's, it's she by Sheree is not sheree yet. It's not she by sheree It's not doing that yet. Help me out here. Um. Lord, there is another. And shout out to that grape juice. They're another blocking company or um, platform you can go and get the latest on celebrity news. Okay, but yeah. Ooh. 
Woo, Candy is bringing it down. Digga, digga, dun, down. Okay, that girl is being all that I had hoped she could be. But I was never privy to seeing her cut up like this. But if this is Candy in real life and this is what she get down with her real friends, we want this Candy on the show every season okay we want her on the show every season and we don't want her talking this shit on her confessionals or on speak on it we don't want it there we want it in live in color on the real housewives of atlanta when you all are typing but moving on just trying to figure it out for the people not for me inquire minds want to know oh ooh, 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 ooh. at the podcast let's also talk about the fact that she introduced, well, not introduced, but reintroduced her friend, Fatum. I've tried to introduce her to so many great guys. Just get away from that. Right. Fatum is hilarious to me, okay? I love Fatum. I think Fatum is super cool. She's funny. She was already in the past episode when she tried to say the crazy stuff about um, Drew's husband. But you're going to see her in future episodes. So I'm already going to tell y'all now. I like Fatum. I think Fatum is cool. So Fatum was just keeping it 100 with her. Like everybody's been wanting to know why was you saving yourself for this man who ended up got here out you looking crazy. When is he coming home? Hopefully by the end of the year. So is he going to come home and do this? Not initially. <laughs> Girl's no fool now. I've been a fool before, child. I've been a fool. <laughs> don't let me be no fool. Don't be no fool. <laughs> Got you here looking cold, right? Zay. He left you out outside in the cold, literally. Don't let me be no fool. Don't be no now, you know, he's not even giving real apologies, apparently. I didn't, I didn't even realize he didn't really apologize to her, you know what I mean? I try to dismiss the warning signs, and like many others, I have fallen victim to being in love and being stupid. So, like, she got her friend for tune coming. Well, we got, uh, uh, we got a sidebar right there, Sheree. Um, you damn near close to your sixth and still ain't you, baby, because I'm 54, and I think you're around the same age group, maybe uh, three or four years old older than I am we don't have time to waste our breath that God give show us grace and mercy to be uh waiting and taking being taken care of possibly by no con artist okay because if he con artist back in the day nine times out of ten he's still conning paper and you should know better than anyone Okay, you should know better than anyone, Sheree, on not being con. But it seems like you got con, or maybe you're conning us, okay? Because maybe this was just a storyline, a storyline he helped you with. And you're supposed to play the victim, the dumbass, okay? Is that what it was, Sheree, girl? Is that what it was? Moving on. In an, in an episode, who obviously we see coming, come back again later. Next, we saw Marlo and the boys. Shout out to the boys. Um, I believe Michael just had a birthday. Shout out to Michael. Happy birthday to you, boo. We love you. We love William. Michael and William, very handsome boys. You know, Marlo has been helping, you know, raise them for, I guess, the last couple of years. We've been seeing them on the Real Housewives of Atlanta do their thing. Now, all of a sudden, in this episode, she started trying to point out all of the things that the boys was doing wrong in her eyes. Um, she started talking about how they ain't cleaning up. She started talking about how they ain't washing clothes. Now, hold on, y'all. I'm sorry. Now, I want to say, I don't think there's anything wrong with anybody not having a washer and dryer. But did y'all peep when she said something about she had him to get all his dirty clothes together, she was about to take him to the um the laundromat? You know what, get all your dirty clothes together. I'm taking you guys to the laundromat. I'm like, all that money you spent, I know you ain't taking all that Fendi Gucci Louis to, to the laundromat every day. I'm taking- And you know that's bullshit. That is quite bullshit. I'm like, did Marlo meant to have that come out of her mouth? Because how you gonna be driving around in a Maserati or Rolls Royce? You drip down in Louis Saint, wait a minute, Louis, uh, Saint Laurent, uh, what is the other stuff she be wearing? Fendi, Gucci, but you going to a laundromat to wash your clothes? 
Are you get get the fuck out of here? Get the fuck out of here, Marlo, with that dry ass tease. Ain't nobody believe in that mess. Hey, even though everyday working folks got a washer and dryer, cause they don't want to go to the laundromat. Hell, they had probably be in the laundromat when they were little kids. Wanted to be at home, wanted to play with their friends, but your parents dragged you to the wash the, the laundromat to do clothes. What kind of shit is that? That's bringing old bad memories up for me. Ooh. Yes, because my mama didn't have a washer and dryer when we were younger. We had to go to the laundromat. It's bringing up old teeth for me. Let me break out. Let me break the cycle because I know for one thing was damn sure when I got grown. I definitely got me a car and I definitely got me a washer and dryer because those are the two things, the two things that I had to go through not having a car because we didn't get a car until I got but in high school yes girl and i had to be, be sitting on that big ass model bus going to the doctor's appointment going to the grocery store it was hell so no those are the two things i said lord if you just let me grow up and get a decent job i'm gonna always have me a car i don't care what kind of car it is and i'm gonna always have me a uh, washer dryer because i can't do it now i can't do it now Okay, I'm about to pull up because I, I was going to cry. But since Sheree is trying to fake cry over there, didn't pass one tear. One tear. And she knows she was running in front of the camera because we were trying to catch her tears trickling down her face. But it wasn't. She ain't no good actor. She faked the funk. And we're going to move on. Hold on. Oh, shoot. Taking you guys to the laundromat. Maybe she made it into a closet instead of a laundry room. I doubt that. Like, you literally. Oh, Lord. I think it was, what was her name? J Jamie that helps um Candy out with her um uh, her YouTube stations and stuff, or probably her marketing. Um, She said Marlo probably turned in the a larger rent that should have been in her house i mean the wash and dry area she probably turned that into some old closet space for her wardrobe now now jamie you 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 being kind of petty girl girl you petty but i like that one slam dunk for you we give candy birds another point <laughs> moving on Packing your stuff up, and I cannot see Marlo Hampton sitting up in the laundromat with her chain. She said on this show that she told him, Go ahead, put all your stuff in the bag so I can take him to the laundromat. And I'm like, Is she just making them wash their clothes at the laundromat? Or is she washing her clothes at the laundromat? She's probably sitting in there. Good question. You know Good like, question. I'm and that was confusing to me. They all three probably like, was okay, watching their clothes. She just no. didn't want to put her name in there. Driving down to the, the laundromat. The boys to wash their clothes. Driving down to the laundromat in a Rolls Royce. I cannot. I will not. I won't. I won't believe such a thing. But Candace, since you're bringing it so clear, crystal clear, I will drink from the water <laughs> that you are serving. Woo, quenching my thirst. Woo, baby girl, keep it on, keep it on. Here we go. Either it's in the cleaners or you wasn't at home. But she said the laundromat. And then he brought it back home and it was sour because you know how when you don't wash or when you wash, you don't really dry it all the way and then you just throw it back and it's still kind of wet. So she made it seem like, I'm confused on that. Uh, Marlo, I need some more um, explanation. His stuff was all wet, like sour. Like, you know, after three days, it's going to be awful. Smelling, yes. Some people are old school. Some people have a dishwasher and don't use it because they never had one. I don't use the dishwasher. I hand wash all the dishes. My auntie don't use the dishwasher. We just got her one for the first time ever in life. And she ain't going to use it. Okay, we all hand wash our dish dishes over here. I get what you're saying. But... I just thought that was weird. That's neither here nor there. So what I was, my point really was that she seems to be in this episode trying to point out the bad things the other boys have been doing. And I just kind of felt like I don't really remember her doing that before. I don't really remember her talking about, you know, like, of course, you know, you want to talk about, oh, they did good in school or, oh, you know, maybe they need to do some homework or they ain't been doing the homework nothing like too crazy oh you know somebody punched a hole in the wall oh this happened oh that happened and she was just making like it all just happened right now was that the setup so that she could justify putting them out you said fun tea wearing off. Fun tea wearing off. <laughs> the fun auntie is wearing off, right? I mean, I don't know. That just was like so strange.
strange to me. I was just like, okay, I don't remember her having that many negatives to say before. Or unless she was just... Well, yes, Candy. She probably was holding it off because she had to go a couple of episodes in to make her money. And everybody was like, ooh, we like Marlo. We like Marlo. Thank you for giving her a peach. And so she's gotten all her praise and worship. So now she's trying to uh, say, I can't do this thing. Like, who does it? It's just like you go and you adopt a, a pet or something. And then you have it for say uh, so you got the pet for uh, a present for christmas and then after christmas don't wore off we don't got into the new year and you see that that pet is going to be more work than what you anticipated and you're going to be the one having not to do it and then you take it back to the shelter what kind of bullshit is that and that's how i looked at marlo and what she was doing but moving on is holding it back. We'll hold off our thoughts to later for that. You know, they move right along, so we're gonna get more into that. I'm, I'm just giving you the, br the brief synopsis of the early part of the episode. Sonya ends up at Kenya's home, and you know, they've really. And maybe we're gonna have to do a part two, but I really just wanted her to get in there. Let y'all hear how she was trying to break it down about Sheree, her $10,000 chandeliers floating around the house. Because how can they make it sound like is that she was walking into a museum, honey. You know, everything is like cold, calculated, put together. No kids running around. No grown-ups that, you know, like to smoke or do, you know, leave dirt around or unkept things around. Ah, ah. All of it was immaculate, like it was on uh, a show type of scene where, you know, like she had an open house. Like you just go through and look at all the wonderful fine art, fine um, accessories she have to decorate her house inside, you know, like a museum. And that's pretty much how she had it but what we're trying to figure out is candace say just asking for the people and i'm nosy as hell too so go on and tell me where you get all this money from did you invest real well did the stock market just open up its uh doors to you girl what's going on tell us the tea or was this some of the money Tyrone had scammed some people out of allegedly and he just said okay you hold it for me baby I can give you 10 stacks every month okay and then you have the ability to do whatever you want to do for that house and you know think about our future our plans or maybe not maybe it's like like you help me out you have my money you keep my money straight and I'm gonna cut you off 10 stacks or something like that every month so she was feeling fulfilling her contractual obligation allegedly and he supported her by giving them funds okay to tell you the truth the storyline was very weak for me i could not imagine sheree dating someone that she knew was going to go to jail for a fraudulent type of thing where he conned some seniors you know what i'm saying damn you're almost a senior citizen you're senior citizens yourself um miss sheree okay but I was like, Candy was on point with this, and I'm about to come back tomorrow for part two, because it was it was on speak on it, and she was breaking down the tea. I said, okay, I'm team Candy. I'm team Candy now. So any infractions I may have put on you, baby, they probably more so was deserveable. But I'll I'll say, okay, I'm sorry. I need to be on your team, girl, because you float how I float. You get shit taken care of ASAP, and Maybe we don't get to see you get on tall ass. You know what I'm saying? Maybe she don't want to show that side. But behind closed doors, they probably rumbling with the words. You know what I'm saying? With the mouth of the words and stuff. And then when he get mad, he probably go on out. But she said, it don't matter to me because I'm going to make it with or without you. Woohoo! So, yes, I'm Team Candy. So, uh, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I was like, ooh, girl, what a fresh breath of air. I do know that you can take care of yourself. You can because I thought Riley would have to come back after she get her degrees and stuff and regulate some folks up in your life. Meaning Todd. <laughs> but I think you got it, Candy girl. I think you got it. Candy girl. You are my world. And I need you. 
teaching every day. Hey, we might take that slay, uh, slay assassin from. Uh, now nah, we can't touch Ken. <laughs> we can't touch Ken. You can't be doing it each and every time we need her to. So we can make you uh, part two. Or we can make you number two to being a slay assassin. Because you, you showing up and showing out doing this thing of calling uh, Sheree Whitfield out, girl. And all her lovely furniture and accessories up in her house. Looking like you in a little museum out there. Like this is what your house should look like if you're part of the upper echelon type of people. Okay. Because I'm telling you, Sheree how look like she don't have no kids in there. She don't want to see no kids in there. But she do got Gotti in there. So he must be very well trained. Or could that be Tyrone's dog that she's holding on as well? Because I didn't like the that dog too big and he looked too mean to me. Okay, that I can, you know, cozy up to. But hey, Sheree might be gangster like that, y'all. Sheree might be gangster. Okay, they gave, cause it gave me uh what it what that show was uh, New Jack City. Uh with the uh Rice of Snipes playing the Kingpin guy. And he had that, that big old growling dog looking like a hellhound or whatever. Ooh, I was scared of that dog. And I wouldn't even know we're near close to that situation. But uh, I don't know. Sherry sure, might got a, a, a bad side of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, cut your throat type. And literally cut your throat type of mentality going on. But that's neither here nor there. That was a good uh, excerpt from Speak On It, Candy, uh, Burst Platform. Shout out Candy Girl. You finally won Del Chanel for they swear over. But I don't know what we can do about me um saluting you with Todd Tucker because I'm about like Riley. I'm about like Riley. I don't trust him yet. I still don't trust them, girl. But I think you got all your dots dotted and your T's crossed when it comes to that scenario, even if you wanted to walk out any day now. But, you know, like I said, y'all nice looking couple, this, that, and third. I just, I just worry about a man taking care of a woman. Uh, I'm not, well, taking a woman's money is what I meant to say. I, you know, ooh, I can't, ooh, that I can't stand. You can't be sitting up here, uh, messing with a woman that, you know, came from. Well, I ain't gonna say she came from nothing, but it it, it was probably a middle class type of living, you know. But you know, she has grown and and expanded leaps and bounds, and she did that prior to getting married. So it's like I I, I ooh, I just hate to see somebody, you know. I hate to see it. I hate to see it. That's why I guess I can't give Todd everything because um. I haven't seen anything that he has done. I'm still waiting on Todd Tucker Enterprises, okay? I'm still waiting on that. I know it can come true, but I need Todd to make it happen. I don't need him to, you know, get candy money to make it happen. I need him to make his own money since he's saying he gives her ideas. And it seems like they may split the profits, you know, straight down the line. But I need to see him have an enterprise on his own. I need to see him have his own team. And then they come together for mutual collaborations on certain projects. But I, I just need a man to have his own. You know what I'm saying? I need a man to have his own. God bless the child that got his own people. But that's all I got for this video. Hopefully y'all like it. Love it. Gotta have more. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.